today we're going to carve some little fox faces. When I'm running workshops, I always prepare these blanks out of wood and the children can choose which one they, they want to carve and they draw out the, the features on them and they carve away. And everyone is carving differently. Everyone is different, which is, is marvellous. The most important thing that you will need are gouges, carving gouges. You may or may not have them. Most carving gouges of about this size are about 20 pounds, 25 pounds new and I'd probably recommend sort of more of a, a, a six or a seven uh, sweep like this with, you know, 20, 25 mil max width, really. What we also need is a board, a carving board like this. This is just a bit of sterling board. Any, any board will do. The batten screwed along the bottom, so it hooks over the side of your bench. And then a couple of other battens on the top so that when we're carving, we've got something to carve against. And this, this is really important that we can carve against something. If we're just out here, the piece of wood is just going to move all, all over the place. It's an, impossible to, to use. And some sort of mallet like this. Okay, let's take our Sharpie and start drawing on where we actually need to carve off. So let's set the eyes in down here. We don't need to take the bark off. This, this bark is, is not going to come off. And then we want to cut the ears out there like that. It's always good to put these marks in because you don't know where to cut if you don't. Most people hold it up at the handle and hit it like that, which is fine but you need a lot of good control in order to be able to do that. If you hold the chisel near the tip, so your hand is resting on the workpiece, you've got far more control, and ultimately it's a lot safer. And when we start a cut, we tend to go in more vertically, and then tip the chisel down flatter. So far have been going with the grain, going from the highest point, going from the bark down into the wood. Now if we were to turn this round and go from where we have cut into the bark, into the highest bit of wood, and if I was to hit this with the mallet, I would just split all this piece of wood off, which isn't what we want. So we always need to go with the grain. You can see I can get some nice shavings off very easily and then if I go against the grain I can put all my effort in there I'm, not, I'm just going to get the chisel stuck or I'm going to split this split this off now, so I've just sharpened this chisel up and it's slicing through the wood like butter I'm really not using very much force at all and you can see again I'm always working away from myself every time, every cut by hands or any of my body parts are behind the edge. And what I don't want to see is someone holding it like that and doing the... I'm sure you're all, all cringing and shouting at the camera and at the moment because you know what's going to happen. I'm going to stab myself. So hands always behind the edge at all times. This is just basic common sense. Don't work into your body like this either. Always away from yourself. Depending on the age group you're working with, especially year five, year six, 
this technique of using the chisel is less likely to happen. Some of the children will take it will do it brilliantly. Some of them will really struggle with it. It's worth definitely worth showing them and encouraging them to do it. But if they really feel after some time and encouragement that they can, just go back to using the mallet. Well, you can see exactly when I've hit with the mallet and all these little ridges going across there. If I'm just pushing the chisel through, that won't happen. So you get a better finish if you push the chisel through the wood, if it's really sharp. And it has got to be really sharp. Your tools have to be sharp. So there we go. We would usually start off with round pieces of wood like this, sycamore or willow. This is probably best, but go for anything and preferably not to green. You can use green wood, it's perfectly okay. It's softer, it's easier to carve, but you want at least half the moisture out of it, ideally. We need a saw to saw up our pieces of wood. It would be useful to have an ax to split the wood initially, a pencil and some sort of mallet like this. These are simple ones just I quickly make up as a bit of elm and ash. So we split it out and split it out here. So out of this piece, we can potentially get two of these uh, fox faces. Well, I've got my bigger mallet. I place the ax on the piece of wood, lining it up how I want it. Tap, 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 until it bites. I can then give it a good whack. And I'm going to cut off the one on the other side as well. Start off like that, draw, cut these, cut a line down here, cut a line across there. So I've got four cuts, and then I need to do a V in the top, coming out. I want to come right out to the corner there. I want to leave at least a centimetre's gap before I start doing this V. So that's what I'm going to cut out. Let's readjust this. So this is actually vertical and cut down. Okay, remember to finish off with the saw parallel to the ground or the bench. You don't want to finish off at an angle because the piece, this V in the middle won't actually come out. Let's flip this over. that's popped out. Right, okay. Uh, the wood is getting a little bit tricky to hold now because it's domed like this. And it doesn't want to stay in place. So I'm going to have to cut at an angle. And there we go. I'm actually wanting it a little bit more pointy down here. This is this is more like a cat's face rather than a fox's face, really. It's amazing. Just little, just little changes can make these animals into something entirely different. Okay. Oh, that's that's yeah. That's that's reasonable. 